Well, good morning, Mrs. Kimball from Kids Cook Real Food here, and what a weird day, right? It is a weird time that we have found ourselves in. Uh, yesterday, our schools, you know, said we're not we're not closing yet. We're just watching things, and I said I bet within a week we'll be closed. And then this morning, my daughter, who's like light alarm that go you know goes off like before it goes off with the light, woke her up early, and she got herself some breakfast, and she came rushing into our room and said. Oh my gosh, there's no school today because she's the one who got the message on the machine. And, and we, you know, we eased her anxiety about that. And, um, but it just feels weird. I think it's not even quite sunk into me yet what things will be like, but I was already, I'm a planner. So I was already thinking last night, like this is going to happen. What should parents do to number one, ease kids anxiety while they're home and number two, boost immunity and, and create some routine that maybe the kids will be missing without school. And I mean, even homeschoolers, all your co-op stuff is canceled, all your sports are probably canceled. It's weird, right? It's super weird. So I'm feeling very grateful this morning that I became trained last year as a certified stress mastery educator because I feel like now I have something you know, to bring to you. Now, of course, we're gonna talk about over the next couple of weeks about how great cooking with your kids is when you're stuck at home. But today I really wanna talk about just the anxiety that people might be feeling. Um, so three habits that you can implement every day to help ease anxiety and boost immunity, okay? There are kind of four top things that boost immunity according to like germ theorists or I'm sorry, who was it? It was a, a infectious disease specialist. That's the phrase that didn't pop to my head. Um, and so we're gonna talk about three of those today and one over the next couple of weeks. So first is being grateful, okay? So the technique or the, you know, what you need to do to reduce your risk of infectious disease is to lower your stress. And everybody's saying that, chill out, lower your stress. Don't be anxious. Well, how do we do that? We can't just say, I'm not going to be stressed without filling it with something positive. And studies show that giving gratitude, whether you're a person of faith and that's part of prayer, or whether you're just speaking out loud things you're grateful for and really trying to feel it in your heart, that gratitude can reduce anxiety, ease your stress. It will help train your brain to see the positive throughout the day or if it's at night throughout the next day. So just being grateful for what you have is really, really powerful. You know, I went out and talked to my three kids who are awake. I've got a teenager who's still in bed. We'll come to that. Um, talked to my three kids this morning and I said, let's just, you know, they were like, oh, we're so sad. We want to go to school, which I love. But I said, let's just talk about what we're grateful for. So we all said like three or four things that we were really grateful for. And it was sweet because some of them were grateful for each other. And then you see the smile and like, I could tell that they were actually feeling it. So that's going to be a, a bookended habit in the Kimball house, beginning and end of day, talking about what we're grateful for. That is one way to reduce our stress. Um, keeping kids away from the news and social media and yourself too, not overdoing that. Um, just getting the information you need and no more is another really important strategy. So number two is sleep. It's really tempting when you get an accidental vacation to just let your kids stay up late. That is not a good idea. We know that we need consistent, you know, go to bed and rising times. And a lot of those little kids are not going to sleep in. They still need to have their normal school bedtime. Sleep is the number one way to prevent illness and heal from illness, right? What happens when we sleep? Our, our memories are consolidated. We actually learn better when we have good sleep. Growth happens. Hello, that's what children need. Cell regeneration happens and our immune system builds. So do not get tempted to let your kids stay up later, you guys, okay? Do not get tempted to let your kids stay up later. Um, you know, if you want to extend that by like 15 minutes, I don't know. Don't let your kids stay up later. Now, the one caveat is teenagers. I say never wake a sleeping toddler, never wake a sleeping teenager. So mine, I believe, is still in bed. Um, and, and, and so maybe like a teenager's circadian rhythm is shifting. Okay, they're, they're like now wired to stay up a little later and sleep a little later, which by the way, side note, is why it's atrocious that high schools start before elementary schools. That's not good for teens. There was actually a study where if teens got 45 minutes more sleep, in other words, their school started 45 minutes later, SAT scores went up by like 200 points. So you guys, if you have teenagers or tweens, let them sleep in, build their brains, let them grow more. And maybe when they go back to school, like they'll actually be performing better academically. But 
not at the expense of the beginning of the night of the bedtime. Don't let them stay up forever. Like maybe an hour later, right? Like weekend that's in our house. That's weekend timing an hour later, and then they can sleep in. So that sleep is so, so, so important. And again, reminder, don't let those devices be in the bedrooms an hour before bedtime. Do not let them be in the bedrooms overnight. Your teens don't need their alarm right now, right? Get those devices out of the bedrooms. Number one, gratitude every day. Number two, sleep. And number three is just exercise and getting outside, right? Our moms were always saying like, go outside and play. They were right. We need fresh air. And actually exercise is one of those top four ways to build our immunity from the infectious disease specialist. One is reducing your stress. Two is getting enough sleep. And three is exercise. That's not that hard, but it's going to be a little bit tempting, especially if we get some bad weather too, to let our kids do a lot on screens. And we've got to resist that temptation and boot them outside. Obviously, every neighborhood will have to make their own decisions on like whether we play with friends and that's going to be really weird and really awkward. And I invite conversation about that in the comments. Um, if your schools are closed, by the way, drop your state in the comments because I'm in Michigan and the Southwest Michigan, our schools are closed today. Very, very weird. Um, but let's, let's really try to implement those three things. The fourth strategy from the infectious disease specialist to most build your immunity is a nutrient dense diet. And so that's what everything we do here at Kids Cook Real Food and over at my blog, Kitchen Stewardship. So we'll be talking about that in more depth over the next few days, but I really wanted to give you these three strategies from a cooking teacher and a stress mastery educator to kind of start off your potential extended spring break well. Start off with some good habits, you know, remind your kids to brush your teeth, get out of their pajamas, you know, just make sure it's not like a total vacation every day so that we still have some routine because routine is another way to reduce anxiety, especially for kids. So my heart goes out to all of you, um, especially if you're feeling a little bit of anxiety, remember what you're grateful for. Speak those things out loud. Let them sink into your being and, and fill your heart. Um, and if you're a person of prayer, obviously lift that up. Um, Lent is a great time for many Christian religions right now to start those new habits. All those things we said we wouldn't have time for, like family prayer, you got lots of time now. Um, my team and I are working on some resources for you. We've got a lot of homeschoolers in our community, so we're drawing upon their experience. What can we do with our kids while we're home? Um, if you have any ideas that we should add to that big resource that we're compiling, drop those in the comments too. Um, I'm Katie Kimball from Kids Cook Real Food, and we'll be coming back every day, almost every day probably, with my kids to give you some ideas on how to get your kids in the kitchen and doing some productive practical work during these uh, you know, extended spring breaks. So we are open for enrollment, just coincidentally, for the next three days. If you're ready for a cooking class, go to kidscookrealfood.com, and I am ready to help you.